Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for Two Year Eternity Season 2, Episode 12. So, last episode, we met the uh, immortals that Bon had talked about, but they ended up just being uh, new people for Fushi to meet who could eventually become forms once they die. Fushi got really upset with Bon because of this. Um, but started to kind of get to know them in the in the end. Started to learn their stories a little bit. Uh, we have Kai, Hyro, and Messar are the three of them. Uh, they also heard from the queen that they need to earn the trust of the people, uh, the castle, and I don't remember. There was a third, but I can't remember the third. Uh, he's already starting to earn the trust of the people by helping to repair a building that has crumbled. Uh, so we'll see how he continues to earn trust. So the queen seems surprised that he 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 did what he did, although that doesn't mean he has the trust of the people quite yet, right? Just because he did this one act, but like it definitely implied that it's it's forming. So hopefully we can manage to earn the trust that's needed to be able to save Renroll from themselves. <laughs> no, obviously it's still the, the knockers and everything. We also learned that the knockers communicate through images, which is uh which is interesting. I was curious about how that worked and how you're able to tell intention through images, right? Uh, there must be a way that they're able to feel it, right? Like, you know, because obviously if I show you a picture of someone and I'm like, hey, do it. And they're like, wait, what am I doing? Like, am I killing the person? Am I falling in love with the person? Am I, you know, just like pranking them like there's so many different things when you look at a picture how it can be interpreted and i'm like have the knockers been interpreting things wrong this whole time has been like some otherworldly god sending them images just being like hey go friendly with these people and they're like murder <laughs> but anyway let's watch this episode and find out so we're gonna start here in five four three two one now Oh, man. Spare parts. That's fucked up. Fact, fucked up, black one. I know Bond, that's what I mean, that's what Bond did, but it's such a messed up way to, to word it. As a white guy, it feels awkward calling something black one. But it's what the show calls him, so I'm going to embrace it. And hope that no one thinks I'm racist. <laughs> be like, uh... Be like the boomers when they're like, uh... When they're like, I love the gays! <laughs> Damn boomers. My hot take is do whatever you want, just don't bother me with it or hurt people by doing it. All right. If you if you want to believe in some kind of religion, go for it. Just don't try to recruit me to it, you know. And accept that other people have other beliefs and you're fine by me, you know. Same with if you're gay, sure, just don't hit on me, you know. I'm not I'm not like that, so but you do you. Doesn't bother me. What other people do is their business, not mine. Everyone should live their lives in a way that makes them happy. As long as it doesn't hurt other people. Hmm. Interesting. A princess. I guess he protected the princess, right? That was one of the things. Hmm. 
Did she teach him the game? Or... Because supposedly he came up with this game, right? They have no eyes. No, I'm just kidding. Mmm, she throws the veil on. Oh, we have her name now. I don't know if we had that before. Yep. Get out of here, people. <laughs> Pretty wild little throne she's got there. And she went from veiling her face to veiling her entire existence. Ah, uh, recreated the house. Nice. Wise man. <laughs> nice. I like he's still connected. He's got like an umbilical cord to the world. They have sign-ups for it and everything. Hmm, is he still connected to it though? Is that how it's stronger? I like how what's connected to him Yo. It looks like a rope. Yeah, which reminds me of the rope that he used to carry, that, like, drags behind him when he was the boy. Yeah, him. <laughs> you gonna try to, like... Learn all the houses to protect them or rebuild them if they break. It's crazy. <laughs> he just dragging a rope everywhere, just endlessly expanding it. And what if someone sees it and like cuts it? I guess. Hey, opening kid. Uh oh. Knocked an arm out of its socket with that fall, maybe? Kamu. Oh, 
Oh, he's got a love interest. Oh. Interesting. Fushi didn't get a pain from it, right? Did we see a pain response like that when he fell? So maybe he doesn't feel pain, but he pretended he did? Oh shit. Is he bruised up? Hmm. Wow. I didn't even recognize him. He's one of our guys, huh? Wow, my bad. That's, uh... It's not Messar. I don't know them very well yet. I apologize, guys. <laughs> I thought that was just someone random. He's either Kai or Hyro. I want to say Kai, but... Probably wrong. All of them pulled. What? Oh. That's messed up, man. So his teeth grew back? Is that what they said? Hmm. <laughs> Something that isn't mush. Interesting. Why make him eat the same food? Mm, is he gonna go take some of it? Guess not. Saw a little bit of the book. Hmm, from the book, yeah. Oh. He he never really learned about hurting people, right? And if he doesn't feel pain, it's probably hard to understand other people's pain. Hmm. Oh. Okay, maybe his teeth doesn't come back. I might have read that wrong. I apologize. He's Hyro, my bad. Of course it's- I had a 50-50 chance of the choice of the names I choose. God damn it. I chose wrong. Uh, it's my bad. Jesus. That's fucked up. I'm gonna go back, by the way, and hear that scene of when they talked about the teeth. Don't worry. I'll figure it out. I thought they said they, like, came back and they were trying to figure out why, but clearly not. <laughs> if he has to have, like, implants in.
Damn. <laughs> hmm. All right. Hmm. Interesting. Multiple houses a day. <laughs> Earn our trust and maybe we'll tell you. Hmm. Here's a point. Uh oh. They're going to lose the trust of the people if they bother them, right? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> hmm. Just time management. Yeah, I think he's he's definitely doing more than I think he's going to come in clutch when when it's needed. I think he's like planning, like looking at that game over and over again. I think he's coming up with strategy, I imagine. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but Uh I mean they did they did open up that connection of them being friends as children.
<laughs> Just fighting. Boys will be boys. <laughs> Kick the shit out of each other. Dunno. <laughs> Sad, eh? Yeah, I mean, he does definitely does that, speaking in different <laughs> friend zoned. How do you know about that? They have that in this world. You don't even know anything about love. Is that an anachronism? He like barely knew love or anything, yet he understands uh friend zoned. Whatever. I don't care. Cool. It's kind of like the black one, isn't it? That's almost exactly how the black one appears, right? So is, um, I mean, is Fushi's ability just the the same as black ones? Just black ones is way more advanced. Hmm. Man, those pieces went like. Okay, I guess some of them are scattered. Don't know. Hmm. Ah, uh, the people are destroying their houses. So if he's not the one to destroy that, is he able to rebuild it? I guess, didn't he say he's already mapped out, like, a lot of sections? They managed to convince people to break their houses down. Ah. He won. Nice. Hmm. Ah, okay. Hmm. <laughs> That feeling. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was a that was like a he like down and he got like a motivation look, like a alright. In my credits. Cool. That was once again it's like a We're building up these new characters and obviously preparing for the big battle that's gonna happen in Renrill. Nothing, like, all too crazy happened. Obviously, got a, a bit to talk about in regards to the the past of a few of the characters that we learned about. Um, 
Hyro being uh kind of raised in solitude, right? Well, not not solitude. That's the wrong way to word it because he wasn't alone. He had someone with him, but he was raised in like you know, he didn't get to go out much, right? I don't know what what that be. There's a word for it. I just can't think of it, but but yeah, he didn't get to go out much. He basically had the same pattern, the same like lifestyle that he lived. He was raised, I guess, because he couldn't feel pain. They they thought he was different and treated him different, and that's why he was like locked away. They thought he was like dangerous or possessed or whatever. Man, I mean, I guess you know, in in our world, we thought people were witches and stuff like that. It's probably not much different than that, you know. It's possible that he could have been tried as a, I mean, I guess, as a, like a warlock, I guess, as a male witch. But, um, but anyway, that is it, guys, for episode 12. So, before anything, there's a couple things I wanted to go back to. Because I am just a ultimate failure at reading subtitles sometimes. Um, he says here... Um, no way I'd ever become king. The reason being that the king chose that chick's mother. Alme and I are siblings from different mothers. Siblings from different mothers. That means the... So the current king is his father then? Is that right? Because siblings from different mothers would mean that they have the, they share the same father. Okay. Um, but. Interesting. I like how, um, you know, obviously with uh, Fushi's not knowing really a lot about how, like, love in the world works and relationships and stuff like that. He doesn't really react to the same way Bond does. Like, Bond was like, oh, you know, when he heard that. Because obviously, if, you know, that that means they're related enough that you shouldn't be with each other. But Fushi still asks, like, don't you, don't you like her, you know? Or love her and stuff like that. And it's like, he did have those little sparks coming off him. But I wonder if he fell in, like, because that's going to be really awkward. Like, did he fall in love with her before knowing? Or has he known the whole time? That's what I'm wondering. Because, like, can you imagine falling in love with someone and then learning that they're, like, a sibling of yours? Like, or, like, a half, I guess it's a half-sibling, but still close enough that, you know, you wouldn't want to be doing that stuff with them. Um, but it's definitely one of those things where, like, I feel like there would be, like, you can't just instantly stop liking someone if you found, like, if you, if you loved them beforehand and then found out, right? I feel like, obviously, you'd probably have to step away and, and all that, the act the way Messar is, but, uh, but it would definitely be difficult, I imagine, to just let go of those feelings all at once instantly. That, that's rough, so. The other thing I wanted to go back to, I just wanted to go, because I thought I understood that, like, right? So I, I got, the reason why I went back and wanted to reread that is because I thought he said that they were siblings, right? And I was like, oh, okay. But then Fushi still, like, threw me off by still asking, like, hey, do you love her? And it's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait, what? <laughs> like, obviously there's, like, love in, like, the family way and everything, but, um... But, yeah. Anyway, I wanted to go back to Hiro, who talked about his teeth being pulled out, and I'm here right now. Does this not hurt, kid? When I had all of my teeth pulled... Right, that's fucked up. Every time new teeth grew in, they would get pulled. No one would tell me why. That line confuses me. So, does he have some kind of healing power where he, uh, where he gets, like, his teeth 
just come back? Or he was a kid, so are they referring to, did they rip out his baby teeth to test how he doesn't feel pain? And then his adult teeth grew in, and they ripped those out too? Like, what is happening with this Church of Bennett, man? It's fucked up. But, like, I don't know. Because later, she gives him, like, uh, like dentures, essentially, to put in, right? Um, and then they give him a new pair based off her teeth, right? I think is what they were saying. Um, was that just, like, was that just, I don't know, I'm confused. Like, do they constantly grow back? And if so... Is it because they, they kept pulling them out that she gave him the false teeth, right? So that way he could eat in between while he's waiting for his teeth to grow back. Like, I guess my question is, does he have no teeth now? Is he just wearing the dentures in current, like, current timeline? Or did his teeth grow back again, right? I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if that was like a translation issue, but there's a little, a little bit of confusion there. I, maybe I'll ask my friend. I don't know if he remembers. He watched season two, like, as it was airing, so maybe he doesn't remember either, but I know he's watched through this, and maybe, maybe he has a different interpretation that I don't, like, fully understand. Maybe it was just trying to say the baby teeth and then adult teeth coming in, right? That might have been, like, all they were saying. Um... I think really the take the main takeaway is that he doesn't feel pain, right? And that's like so far that's one of the main things that I feel like like cuz obviously we have the other two who are, you know, Messar is really good at playing this game, so he might be good at like strategy. And then we have uh Kai who seems to be like micromanaging everything. So like one has management skills, and one has, like, planning, which I, I don't feel like are insanely useful as, like, new forms. They're definitely helpful. They can definitely be used in situations. But I, I definitely think Hyro has one of the most useful ones, where if Fushi's in, ever in a situation where... Because we know Fushi feels pain when he gets hit in his forms. I guess he could take on Hyro's form if he's in a situation where he's going to take pain, right? And then he wouldn't have to feel it. So I definitely see that being useful in the future when inevitably Fushi earns that form, whether it's the guy dying from old age or from some kind of attack in the future, right? But at this point, I feel like he's met enough of them to gain their forms, right? He's been around them enough where he's going to get those forms. So uh, We also met Kamu as well as part of that scene, who we've seen in the opening, so seeing him here is, is interesting. He's kind of listened in on the conversation and and got pulled into it because of that. So, um, And I like his line of being like, let us protect who we want to protect and everything. Like, Fushi's trying to take everything out of their hands and do everything himself. Whereas, because he doesn't want to rely on people. And I think these people are going to help teach Fushi that he does need to rely on people. And it's not, it's their choice, right? It's not... It's not that this war is because of Fushi. At this point, they're not even targeting Fushi anymore. So it's not his fault, right? He's just trying to stop it. So he needs to stop thinking of it like it's his fault and, and taking everything on himself and let these people try to protect themselves. So, um, but very interesting. Um, we learned Alme's name as well, which I don't know that we knew the queen's name before, but... Um, so, or is she still a princess? Because it, it seems like the the parents might still be alive, which are probably the king and queen, and she's just still a princess. I think, I have, now I can't remember, like, how did I write it down when, did I write it down at all? Okay, I guess I didn't. Damn. I'm curious in the other episode, like, I can't remember if they referred to her as princess or queen. <sighs> but, anyway... So, I also feel like maybe if... Because obviously when she was a kid, she was blushing when she was with uh, Messar. I feel like it's unfair that Messar keeps that a secret. Because if she is, like, pining over him, you know, secretly, even if she doesn't, like, come out and say it, 
I wonder if, and I think that's why he like blew her face mask up and and she ran away angry, was to kind of push her away, is what he was trying to do. But it is still kind of mean because knowing knowing girls, she won't be you know she won't be pushed away so easily, and her feelings will still be there. And then because of that, you know maybe she won't be able to fall in love with someone else because there's always that little bit of love for him maybe there. So, but if you be like, hey, yeah, we're siblings, she can move on from him, right? I mean, unless, uh, who knows in this world, you know? We have crazy Hayase being a crazy bitch, so, you know, an incestuous relationship wouldn't be the, uh, wouldn't be the straw that broke the camel's back in this show, right? But, uh, but anyway... Uh, we also have, really, the last thing I have to say is Fushi is connecting the entire city, seemingly. Like, he's he's already, like, mapped it out a lot, I think. But then also, the, they're rebuilding the houses, so that way every building in the city is going to be connected to Fushi in some way. So that way, maybe in a moment's notice, like, the second a knocker comes out of the ground, maybe he could, like, feel it to play a sword or something and kill it. It, it could be pretty crazy what he pulls off here. Also, seeing him dip into the floor is almost exactly like we see the Black One doing, so obviously we know that Black One sent the orb here. Maybe it's an extension of his own ability, right? And and so, I mean, eventually Fushi might just be able to travel through the entire Earth as he, you know, if he manages to keep connecting everything, like, if he leaves the city and but keeps the connection eventually he might just be like encompass the entire earth and maybe that's what maybe this whole entire planet is some orb that the black one created right and that's why he cares about it and wants to protect it and everything i don't know and that's why he's able to like just travel through the ground and all that and maybe fushi is able to get to that level as well also, I, I really would love to learn more about the Black One, because, like, if he's on that level, if he is, like, similar, like, level of Fushi, but has access to, like, the whole planet, he always knows where they are. Why can't he fight them, right? But, yeah, I mean, I wonder if we'll ever, like, really learn that. Like, why does he need to have Fushi do the work for him? I don't know. Anyway, uh... All kinds of interesting things, but that's going to be it for me, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. Check out my Patreon for two more episodes right now if you want to. It supports me and what I do here. I very much appreciate it. There's also Patreon shows where you can see things like The Last of Us, the rest of Better Call Saul that hasn't been released yet to YouTube, and uh, Sympho Gear for my anime. So check all that out if you're interested. Uh, yeah, links in the description should be popping up on the screen, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.